Hello, hello! Welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today, I've got quite the book haul, which I'm so excited to share with you because the lovely people over at Fourth Estate Books have very kindly sent me a whole catalogue of books that I can sink my teeth into, and I wanted to open them and react to them right now. These are all sort of brand new releases, so hopefully you can get some inspiration of some upcoming reads for yourself. So let's dive in. So I have a little note from Liv at Fourth Estate that says, hey Jack, enjoy all of these gems, Liv. And she's really, really kindly added a little post-it note um, with her personal recommendation of each one, which is just the sweetest thing ever. And it means that you guys get a bit more of an insight into why each of these books is so special. So the first one is Still Life by Sarah Winman. And the note says, pure joy, underlined twice. The kind of characters you intensely miss when you're finished. And there's a signed edition. Oh, cool. Oh, damn. Look at that. Wow. I'm actually going to keep these post-it notes. I'm just going to stick them on the inside um, instead of the cover so that I can keep them because I want to look back at that when I read the book. So this is Still Life and it's described on the blurb. 1944, Italy. As bombs fall around them, two strangers meet in the ruined wine cellar of a Tuscan villa and share an extraordinary evening. Ulysses Temper is a young British soldier. Great name, by the way. What a name, damn. My parents really weren't very original with Jack Edwards, huh? Ulysses Temper, wow. Anyway. Eveline Skinner is a 64 year old art historian living life on her own terms. She has come to salvage paintings from the wreckage of war and relive memories of her youth when her heart was stolen by an Italian maid in a particular room with a view. Ulysses' chance encounter with Evelyn will transform his life and all those who love him home in London forever. Big hearted, sweeping and full of unforgettable characters, Still Life is a novel about beauty, love, the families we forge and the friendships that make us. I love reading books about friendship. Um, <laughs> That sounds really silly and, and daft and childish, I guess, but I think friendship is one of those things that carries us through life. It's one of the most consistent things that we have. Um, and so I love reading about friendship. I love great depictions of it. Um, still life, can't wait to read that. Brand new release as well. And I've seen it everywhere. Every time you go into a bookshop at the moment, this is on display. Okay, the next thing that I've been sent is so incredible. This is the complete Joan Didion collection. Can never go wrong with a bit of the iconic Joan. My faves are Play As It Lays and Slouching Towards Bethlehem. She's a babe. I love Joan Didion and I'm so excited to read the last book that she wrote, I think, before she sadly passed, which is let me tell you what I mean. From one of our most iconic and influential writers comes 12 pieces never before collected that offer an illuminating glimpse into the mind and process of this legendary figure. Also, perhaps instead of being like the last thing she wrote, it's just the last thing she kind of published. Mostly drawn from the earliest part of her astonishing five decade career. Okay, I was so wrong <laughs> when I said she wrote it recently. Didion writes about a gambler's anonymous meeting um, and topics ranging from Nancy Reagan to Robert Maplethorne, Martha Stewart and Ernest Hemingway. Incisive, bemused and stunningly prescient. Oh, I can't wait to read this. Her observations are just always so brilliant and interesting. And Liv, I agree, she is a babe. The next book is this one. It's called Fake Accounts. Liv says, funny, sarcastic, dry, weird, clever, very readable and a lot of fun. Zadie Smith is quoted on the cover saying, I loved it and I think I would trust Zadie Smith with my life. Her boyfriend Felix was an alt-right online conspiracy theorist with thousands of followers, and for as long as they've been together, she had no idea. She wasn't exactly shocked. She'd spent enough time online, swallowed up in a world of catfishing and irony poisoning, that she felt somehow inured to discover she didn't know who she was dating. Still, with nowhere else to be, she decides to flee to Berlin and embark on her own cycle of manipulation in the deceptive spaces of her daily life. From dating apps to expat social events, exposing an in-real-life world shaped by online lies. Ooh! This was like a book that could go absolutely anywhere with that, and I cannot wait to get into that one. Speaking of which, another book that I have been super excited to get my hands on is this one. This is Good Intentions, and I saw an article that describes this author and this book as like the male Sally Rooney, which was met by quite a lot of controversy. You know, if there's a woman at the top of her game and doing incredible things, do we need to have someone to be like, this is the male equivalent though. You know, can't she just be successful on her own terms? But having said that, I think that's a good sign and means that I probably will really love this book. Moving, modern and utterly engaging. What a talent, absorbing, compelling and beautifully written. Oh, and what does Liv have to say? Liv says, poignant, sad, funny, messy in caps. 
on love and identity. Kasim writes about first love and finding yourself brilliantly. Signed edition for you. Oh, cool. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Um, so this is what the blurb says. Nur and Yasmina are in love. They've been together for four happy years but Nur's parents don't know that Yasmina exists. As Nur's family count down to midnight on New Year's Eve, Nur is watching the clock more closely than most. He has made a pact with himself and with his girlfriend Yasmina that as at midnight, he will finally tell his Pakistani parents the truth, that he has spent years hiding his personal life from them to preserve his image as the golden child, that he has built a life with a woman he loves and she is black. Nur wants to be the good son his parents ask him to be and the good boyfriend Yasmina needs him to be, but as everything he holds dear is challenged, he is forced to ask, is love really a choice for a second generation immigrant son like him? Deftly exploring family obligation and racial prejudice alongside the flush of first love, Good Intentions is a captivating and powerful modern love story that announces a thrilling new voice in British fiction. What a blurb, damn. How interesting. That is Good Intentions. I have good intentions of reading this book. A-S-A-P. Wow, thank you so much. Okay, this is potentially my favorite cover out of all of these because look, Cleopatra and Frankenstein, it's giving Lord Melodrama, which is a fantastic album. <laughs> so I'm relying on this being a fantastic book. Pandora Sykes on the cover describes it as tender, devastating and funny, an elegant and exciting new voice. Liv says, this has stolen the hearts of so many readers on Instagram. Every single character in here feels real, which I love. And Butte writing as well. Okay. Oh, and it's set in New York. I can't wait to read this. <laughs> new York is slipping from Cleo's grasp. Sure, she's at a different party every other night, but she barely knows anyone. Her student visa is running out, and she doesn't even have money for cigarettes. But then she meets Frank. Oh, I like that their names are Cleo and Frank. That's cool. 20 years older, Frank's life is full of all the success and excess that Cleo's lacks. She, he offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. She offers him a life imbued with beauty and art, and hopefully, a reason to cut back on his drinking. They are everything each other needs right now. Cleo and Frank run headfirst into a romance that neither of them can quite keep up with. It reshapes their lives and the lives of those around them, whether that's Cleo's best friend struggling to embrace his gender identity in the wake of her marriage, or Frank's financially dependent sister arranging sugar daddy dates after being cut off. That is very random, <laughs> um, but okay. Ultimately, this chance meeting between two strangers outside of a New Year's Eve party changes everything for better or worse. Cleopatra and Frankenstein is an astounding and painfully relatable debut novel about the spontaneous decisions that shape our entire lives and those imperfect relationships born of unexpectedly perfect evenings. Ooh. I mean, how can you even argue with a cover like that? My compliments to the chef. They climbed to the first landing. They had to clear roughly 10 steps to land on the ground floor below. It was the kind of game children played, daring themselves to climb higher and higher. He took her hand. She squeezed it back. They both jumped. Okay, I think I'm gonna love this book. <laughs> I really do. Um, all of these books sound absolutely up my street. The next one is called Brown Girls. Some of the most beautiful writing ever, Daphne's sentences are magic. The book's a gift, an ode to girlhood. Oh, and my post-it note matches the vibes perfectly. This is a long blurb, geez. If you really want to know, we are the color of 7-Eleven root beer. Color of the charcoal pencils our sister used to draw their eyes. Color of peanut butter. Brown Girls dives deep into the lives of a group of young women of color growing up in Queens, New York. Here, streets echo with many languages. Subways rumble above dollar stores and the briny scents of the ocean wafts in from Rockaway Beach. Here, girls like Nadira, Gabby, Naz, Trish, Angelique, and many others struggle to reconcile their immigrant backgrounds with the American culture they come of age in. Here they become friends for life, or so they vow. Exuberant and restless, they roam the city that never sleeps, sing Mariah Carey at the top of their lungs, yearn for crushes who pay them no mind, and break the hearts of those who do, all while trying to heed their mother's commands to be obedient daughters. As they strike out further into the world and ever further from each other, they will ask themselves, is it possible to reconcile where they come from with where they want to go, and the women they are becoming? and will they still be able to find their way home again? In this blazingly original debut novel told in a uniquely lyrical voice, Daphne Palazzi Andreads paints a stunning collective portrait of the journey from girlhood to adulthood, set against a backdrop of race, class, and marginalization in America today. Brown Girls is an unforgettable love letter to women of color everywhere from a daring new writer. Ooh, I feel like my reaction to everything is just, 
Ooh, ah, like a freaking firework display. <laughs> I feel like this is going to paint the portrait of these four characters beautifully. Um, I'm excited to roam the streets of New York with them and hear their voices. And I love um, books that are written in a really lyrical way, so that excites me. Fantastic. And then the last book that I have for this little haul is this one. It's called Vagabonds. And the post-it note just says, I mean, the Marlon James quote says it all, to be honest. What did Marlon James say? Marlon James, author of A Brief History of Seven Killings, says, you don't read this novel. You swan dive into its sea of gods and monsters, lost girls, violent boys, and well-behaved people, both righteous and wicked. And when you finally surface, that sound will be you gasping in wonder. Wow. Imagine someone describing your book like that. that. That was like a short little novel in itself. Damn, okay. Um, let's see what the blurb says then. There are simple and good and straightforward and well-behaved people, I'm sure, but this is not a book about them. Echo the spirit of Lagos and his loyal minion Tatafo weave trouble through the streets of Lagos and through the lives of the vagabonds powering modern Nigeria. The queer, the displaced, and the footloose. In this world, the vagabonds must move unseen, drawing in the city's chaotic, dark energy and breathing it back out again, creating new ways of living in the process. Among them, the driver of a shamed politician with the power to command life and death, a lesbian couple whose tender relationship sheds unexpected light on their experience with underground sex work, a mother who attends a secret spiritual gathering that shifts her reality. As their lives begin to intertwine in markets and underground clubs, in churches and hotel rooms, the vagabonds are seized by the spirits who command the city. A force is drawing them together, but for what purpose? In her debut novel, Vagabond tackles the insidious nature of Nigerian capitalism, corruption and oppression, and offers a defiant, joyous and fiercely inventive tribute to all those for whom life itself is a form of resistance. Okay, you know, this is really interesting because I would love to do a master's um, uh, dissertation on liminal space and those who occupy it, and so I think this book could be very useful for that. How fascinating. And I haven't read that many books about Nigeria, so I'm really looking forward to that. So, thank you so, so much to Fourth Estate for sending me these books. I very nearly dropped them just then. I'm actually at home at the moment. Literally, I've got a train back to Paris in a couple hours, um, and I'm not coming home for another month. So, I need to pick which books to take with me. I definitely think Cleopatra and Frankenstein is coming as is Good Intentions. Those two are definite. I think, oh, I could probably fit one more in. Maybe Fake Accounts. I think these are gonna be my three that I take with me for this month, and then hopefully I'll get to the others next month, just because I also have a bunch of books that I need to read for various videos, so um, I have to kind of spread out the, the books that I read for pleasure as well. Oh, actually, while we're all here, I got a really strange package this morning. Right, look at this. Is that not the largest chewing gum you've ever seen? It's from Airwaves. Um, and I'm very intrigued by what's inside here. Da -da -da! It smells wonderful. Oh, there's a massive candle. Oh, damn, it's huge. Whoa. Here are some items to help refresh your deck. Enjoy these work from home essentials from the team at Airwaves. Oh, this is so nice. I did some work with Airwaves um, not so long ago, um, and it was really, really fun. Oh, I've got a little notebook. Oh, water bottle. That's so nice. I really love that color. That is absolutely coming with me to Paris. Thank you very much. And look at the size of this candle. Ugh, there we go. Whoa, that's bigger than my head. Breathe, relax, unwind. Sand and fog inspired on the Californian coast, eucalyptus spearmint made with natural essential oils. Wow, ooh. And then of course we have some chewing gum. Wow, that was so generous. Thank you, Airwaves. Anyway, there we go. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you have found some new books that you might want to think of reading. I'm definitely going to be reading these so we can um, feed back together. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time in Paris. Bye-bye.